Hello, we have talked a few weeks ago about uh, this famous uh, virus uh, that is called the many ways. I will uh, be calling it the bat virus for the time uh, for the time being. And we talked about two problems that where artificial intelligence potentially in the future could help um, once we analyze all the data and what happened in this situation. One was the detection of the disease and the other one was the discovery of a cure. problems where in the future I think uh, both governments and companies should uh, be start thinking of using artificial intelligence to alleviate at least this problem uh, one day. So in this video we're going to talk about these other three problems that I have identified and how artificial intelligence could be used. Okay so let's go. Okay so the three problems are uh, one is around detection but it's really the problem of uh, who is to be tested and uh, when there is a limited capacity of testing. The second problem is the problem that uh, a fair number of um, first responders, particularly the doctors and nurses, are getting infected. And the third problem is the handling of patients in the intensive care unit um, when the number of patients uh, uh, greatly uh, exceeds uh, the, the, the ratio of doctors and nurses that should be in an intensive care unit. This is happening in Italy. There are other countries that will not have this problem or might not have this problem. So for example in Germany they have an outstanding healthcare system. Everything is free. Uh, healthcare is a right. And, uh, uh, but it's also the, the amount of equipment they have is, uh, is very, very high. So probably, probably they will not have problems. Um, but uh, we don't know this at this time. And so this problem is different depending on various countries but if you look at the United States the number of um, uh, basically beds per capita per, per number of uh, per millions of people is uh, even lower than the average in Europe so uh, some other people might have uh, this problem um, so okay so let's go uh, one by one when it comes to um, when it comes to deciding which person to uh, test and which person not to test so we can imagine that one day uh, we could invent uh, or kind of a public health app that uh, monitors um, your uh, your movements, what you're doing, basically not only monitor what you're doing, but also the ability for you to describe your situation, if you know what, what are your circumstances, and um, basically also triage the data from other um, patients that are or other potential uh, people that have been infected in the. In the places where you have been and basically come up with a model that predicts which a person is most likely to be infected and therefore uh, prioritizing um, which person should be tested not only prioritizing another important problem here is the workflow management so for example imagine today we have to stay all at home or everybody has to be quarantined. And this is really not working well for the common belt, so for everybody, it's a limitation. But think if we could say to somebody, okay, here is a text message, you have to go to this location, take the text at this particular time, you're not gonna go in, in any queue because you are the only one that will be, that be there for these 10, 15 minutes, and then you go and you go uh, out, and, and then we will let you know the results. And, and in this particular period, on the mobile app, you would have a personalized list of things that you have to do. Okay, so uh, I think one place where this would be uh, absolutely uh, useful is in managing the workflow and, and understanding who are the people that should be tested this soon. So, as far as the doctors are concerned, uh, what I'm going to say is a little bit pioneering, but we could use uh, smart clothes and so monitor sensors to create similar models. These models, by the way, have already been created and, and there is a lot of academic research that tends to correlate the um, basically the health condition of a person with indicators that can be measured. So basically not a blood exam directly, but rather something else like the speech, the temperature, uh, the, uh, you know, the, the transpiration and a number of uh, other parameters uh, to find some form of correlations. So we could imagine to develop specific models to see, uh, to basically recommend um, the doctors the optimal behavior and also identifying those that might be at the at highest risk. I don't know if this is fully possible, but this is one direction that we could go. And, and if you think of this, 
So this idea of smart clothes that monitor everything and also the triage the information of one person with what's happening in other places so that basically algorithms learn from other situations. So it's what it's called kind of a transfer learning across different, um, different units. Um, this idea uh, would be, and it's already being explored in fields like uh, dangerous works, you know, in the mines and type of this type of things. And it, the idea could be explored also for the medical doctors. Finally, uh, managing people in the intense care unit. Uh, so there's a lot to do there. So one is prioritizing who has to go. It's not, you might say, but the doctor can do it. Yes, but we know already that um, human subjectivity comes into play and that machines on this are more effective. It's one of the, the, the eliminating subjectivity is one of the real reasons to apply artificial intelligence in the health curve. So who has to go, but also dosing the drug, automatic dosing of the drugs in, in, the, in the intense care unit, uh, intensive care unit, there is a lot of data that are taken for monitor from the patient. So the machine could um, basically uh, um, dosing the drugs and, and uh, automate a portion of, uh, of the work that right now needs to be uh, done by doctors and nurses. Why is that? Because that would uh, uh, allow the same amount of doctors and nurses to uh, give the same quality of care to a larger number of people, which is one of the problems of, uh, that we have uh, today. And, and um, in addition, uh, the AI can be kind of identified, can be utilized also to understand when somebody's prox is basically close to very serious uh, um, uh, conditions. So this is uh, some of the things in the future could happen. I think also in that case, uh, you can envision kind of a mobile app that does a workflow management that tells the nurse you had to go to this bed, you had to go to that bed, um, then calls the doctor in and kind of manage the workflow. All of this, it already exists in, in the logistic world, could be uh, applied here as well. That's, I think, a potential um, for applications that uh, governments and companies will have to look for um, once this emergency is over and we start to plan for the future because the amount of disruption that is uh, happening is really um, gigantic all over the world. Thank you very much. Hope this was uh, interesting. I look forward to seeing you in another video.